Hey, it's Jeff with Master Medics again. Thank you so much for checking out this quick little video on the movement in air and the alveolus. We're gonna be covering those two main functional pieces of the lungs themselves. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way you get notifications of our new videos that come out all the time. They're specifically for EMT and paramedic students that are struggling in school or just wanna get better understanding of the physiology and the pathophysiology of the body. So hopefully you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time as well. Now let's actually zoom in a little bit here to the actual lung themselves. Okay, the lung itself is going to do a lot of like important important things here in order to create the the cellular respiration that we need down the line. Okay, if the lungs aren't doing their job, they're not ventilating, they're not allowing perfusion, then the cells will quickly lose its ability to create aerobic metabolism, and they'll eventually start to infarct, they'll start to die and necrose. And so that is obviously gonna be a huge problem, which is making the lungs an extremely important process of this respiration of these cells, okay? So let's look at this guy. We have a few different main pieces of the lung itself, okay? We have the trachea here, okay? That's the trachea. Okay, I'm gonna change the color a little bit here, whoop. Okay. Then this guy here, right at this cross here, so when it goes to the right and the left lung, this guy is called the carina. Okay, the carina. And then from there, we go into the actual bronchioles themselves. Okay, so we have these big bronchioles here. Okay, these guys here, these massive ones. Okay, those guys are called your primary bronchioles okay your primary bronchioles these are your main ones right here okay those primary bron bronchioles are allowed to go to smaller bronchioles and these smaller bronchioles okay as you're probably gonna guess these are your secondary okay second bronx and those secondary bronchs are gonna finally go to your tertiary bronchs and so forth, so forth. And it's finally going to get to your bronchioles and those bronchioles are going to finally lead to the actual functional part of your lung, which is the alveoli. And this alveoli here, as you can see, is wrapped in capillaries, okay, in venules and arterioles that are gonna allow for perfusion to occur. And so this is what we would call the functional part of the lung, the part that we actually need in order to create the ventilation and perfusion piece of the of the breathing process themselves okay and so when it comes to the movement of air we're actually going to use a, a muscle or a couple muscles in particular to allow for this movement of air and what the big ones that we're going to use is this one that's going to be right at the bottom of the lungs okay and this one here is going to be called the diaphragm Okay. And we're gonna talk about what the diaphragm does in order to uh, promote ventilation in a second here. But you, the main portion of the breathing process of you exhaling and inspira inspiring and exhaling is all due to muscle flexion and muscle relaxation. Primarily, this diaphragm here and another muscle that's gonna do a lot of work. Okay. I'm just gonna draw out some ribs here. Okay. These are your ribs, like so. And in between your ribs, you have intercostal muscles, just like so. They're in between your ribs. Obviously, I've expanded a little bit so you can kind of see it, but these are your intercostal muscles. And then these intercostal muscles will flex, allowing for your lungs, or your ribs, pardon me, to expand. And when that expansion occurs, it creates a pressure gradient. And we're gonna talk about that in a sec here. So that is basically what is happening when it comes to the actual inspiration part, is you're using these inter intercostal muscles and this diaphragm in order to flex them, which promotes 
a pressure gradient. We're going to, again, talk about that in just a second here. And what's happening within this functional piece, this alveoli, is the actual CO2 and oxygen exchange. Okay, That's why they're all covered in the venules and arterioles, is that in this particular process, if I was to draw out just one alveoli, or alveolus, what's going to happen here is that oxygen is going to come into this alveolus and it's going to, I'm just going to put a, uh, a vessel there, okay, and what it's going to do is it's going to perfuse the red blood cells that are going by it and then the CO2 is going to be exhaled out, it's going to perfuse in, or going to leave the body through ventilation and to dissociate from its bicarb state. We'll get into that detail way later, uh, but it's going to do that and simply be exhaled. Okay, and so that's what's happening within the alve alveoli itself. And it's due to the fact that it's completely covered in all of these capillaries in order to basically promote this actual process. And that's why we have these intracostal muscles in this diaphragm in order to allow for air movement. So that way we can create enough ventilation that perfusion is possible. And perfusion is the oxygen perfusing those red blood cells.